Um, so first, maybe invite Charlie, um, creator of Litecoin, uh, to, to take his spot. Alexander, founder and CEO of VNX Exchange. Chris Lee uh, from Huobi Group as well. Um, CFO, not SFO. Um, and then Richard, who is co-founder and board member uh, of GSR. Michael, CEO of Kubit X, uh, to come on stage. All right, so guys, uh, this is probably the last segment for today. We have about half an hour of sharing, question and answers, anything that you want to ask the panel. Uh, this is your chance to, uh, bearing in mind that we probably have to wrap up at about seven. Um, so without further ado, um, I guess gentlemen, I guess most of them need no introduction. But, you know, just for the sake of the new people who are joining us, if you could tell us in the line a little bit about yourself and what you're doing, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Starting for me? Yes, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael O, uh, CEO and founder of Kubix. We have built the uh, world first Bluetooth based hardware wallet in a credit card size device, uh, sold over 150,000, raised a couple, a couple dozen million US dollars, doing all right. Thank you. My name is Rich Rosenblum. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of GSR. Uh, we were probably the first algorithmic market maker in the space, founded in 2013. And uh, we make markets for uh, token coin issuers, as well as uh, exchanges. And we also have a OTC desk. And my background before that, I was at Goldman Sachs for 12 years, um, New York and London, running uh, oil derivatives trading. My name is uh, Chris Lee, um, the CFO of Huobi Group. Um, so Huobi is a leading exchange, cover from OTC, token token, and derivatives on market as well. Um, and also we do our once most uh, comprehensive ecosystem build up in Asia Pacific, especially in China. Um, also we extended beyond the trading, uh, you know, service. Uh, we included Huobi Wallet, uh, Huobi uh, Chart. There's in, in, instant message more than one million users. And also, uh, we got Huobi Pool, that's a mining pool that's one of the top 10 mining in Um I'm, Yeah, I'm, I'm great to be here. Yeah. And Alexander and uh, Charlie needs no and more introduction. So you can see we have the creator of one of the top five cryptocurrencies. We have Alexander looking at tokenization, Chris from an exchange, um, Rich doing market making, and then we have Michael, which is wallet, right? So it's a good representation of, of the space. Uh, so without further ado, I guess the first question would be, what are some of the factors inhibiting mass adoption in, in your opinion, uh, which is one of the themes that have come out throughout Token 2049? One thing we discovered in the past 12 months by uh, working with uh, major financial exchanges uh, with licenses is that um, when they are trying to get approval from uh, regulators, authorities, governments, uh, one thing they are mostly challenges is um, um, the anon anonymity of cryptocurrency itself. So uh, we quickly realized that um, cryptocurrency is great. Uh, it's got fu it's full of potential. Uh, it can be the next uh, biggest alternative uh, financial product. That's the moment when you walk into a bank, they're gonna ask you you wanna invest in insurance, stock, ATF, or crypto. But how do we get there? Um, it's actually by helping the industry um, to solve that anonymity uh, concern from the authorities. And there are ways to do it. And in the later questions, uh, if asked, I'll be answering those. Any thought, Charlie? What are some of the factors or anyone from the panel? Feel free to answer. I think like the user, um, user experience UX is really lacking in the cryptocurrency space. So um, especially in uh, like ways to, to secure your coins. So a lot of people are using um, cryptocurrency exchanges or, or web wallets where they don't control their keys. So it's a trade off between uh, security and usability. And I think it's something that we need to work on to improve, make it easy for people to secure their own coins. I'd say time is one of the, the biggest roadblocks. If you remember back to, to teaching your, your parents or grandparents how to double click with a mouse, um, it's 
surprisingly difficult compared to what you think is one of the, the easiest things you could ever possibly try to do. Um, so when you're learning a, you know, something new in technology um, or anything new in general can be, can be difficult um, for older generations. And I think it's the older generations that are often um, making decisions, whether it's about the law or making decisions on, on investing and finance. So I think as time passes and you have a demographic shift, I think we'll naturally see that, that roadblock pass and have more natural adoption. One other thing is um, volatility. Like the, the price being so volatile, it's hard for people to, um, to actually use the coin, right? To spend it because they don't want to spend it if it's worth a lot more in the future. Also, if it dropped ninety percent, they're not. They don't want to spend it because it, because it's so cheap now. Um, I think it's it's kind of, that's kind of like a chicken egg problem, right? As as people adopt it more, it will become less volatile. So it's what 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 comes first. So it'll take a while. It takes some time for that to solve itself. I think it will solve itself. I think the biggest challenge is because the new asset class. So um, education is 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 vital. And uh, if you ask majority of the retail uh, investor, they don't really understand the, what, what, what this asset class, uh, uh, the logic behind, what's investment value, velocity, uh, the, the decentralized edge. And other thing is, I think, is uh, uh, easy access, uh, accessible. That's in, it's not easy accessible, like the fiat, how to get from fiat to uh, you know, get into exchange and buy the tokens. And, uh, and also, uh, if you invest in something, you want to have a transparent, uh, it's a combined, combined security and stable, trans uh, the, the system uh, is a stable. Uh, and, and it basically is a new thing. Um, so the regulators, is, uh, there are lots of gray areas. So, um, and also, it's a small number of uh, retail investors, it come relatively compared to mass uh, population. Korea, roughly 15% uh, invest in cryptos. In, in the States, Coinbase roughly have uh, roughly 20 million uh, investors. But you compare the population, the percentage is not with the center mass, uh, uh, you know, uh, population. So it's the custodian uh, service insurance part. These are, are vital. As a, it's a great presentation anyway. Huh? Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. It's a great presentation. So talking about lots of like the uh, institutional invest, investors, um, if we want to jump in and invest this asset, there's lots of hurdles. Custodian is the key, transparency, and also e very easy re requirement. For example, if you want to download a, a statement, just like bank statement, investors, stock statement, their portfolio every month, uh, it, it's not easy at all. And there is assurance service for a uh, big four accounting assurance firm. They need auditor, um, uh, auditor uh, the, the exchange. That's a key challenge as well. Up to, day, uh, up to now, there's a, a only a small uh, number of exchange being audited by big four accounting firm. So I think uh, uh, that's a key challenge for institutional in investor to, to jump in. I think in terms of, uh, and also, um, also the products, uh, because if you, if you, like for stock market products, they have uh, some kind of different derivative due to hedging, uh, take the position, for example, if you have stocks, you, you have options. At the moment, option in cryptos is small, very, very small, tiny percentage, and the liquidity is not good at all. Uh, so I think there's, uh, uh, but I think come from education, I think the good, good common, timing, timing is everything, timing is everything, so um, that's the key role. I have just two points to add. Um, in my view, uh, two additional factors that are inhibiting the mass adoption is one, uh, three letters, AML, and two is a scare factor. AML is an important factor in the sense that it's almost impossible or very, very difficult to open bank accounts and to confirm to the banks where you actually got your money from. Um, that is one of the very, very difficult factors for the industry to, to grow and to flourish. And the scare factor is the um, uh, bad press that has been happening about the hacking of the exchanges, you know, lost wallets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It inhibits the mass adoption in a sense that an average Joe, apart from the user experience, et cetera, et cetera, wants to be, when they move to something, they want to be in a more or less protected space. And for sure, reading in the press that another uh, 200 or 300 million were lost, um, you know, doesn't doesn't help. 
that's probably two factors that I would add as inhibiting the mass adoption. Speaking about every oil, how can the industry develop the digital asset market and make investing easy for the average Joe? I mean, we have a few of you from the traditional investment finance world um, moving to crypto, right? Where yeah, last year and shortly in 2017 was just bull market and then subsequent crash. Um, how can this on-ramp to, to, to investing be made easier for the average person on the street? Okay. Um Besides being the founder and CEO of Kubix, I also own a public traded company in Taiwan that serves um, fiat cyber banking security solution to um, 50 banks in over 30 countries. And one thing I learned uh, very deeply from working with Visa, Mastercard, and authorities is that uh, you have to have the combination of three factors at once, as right? security, um, ease of use, and compliance. And talking about how to on board new users easily. Uh, I think user experience is absolutely the key. You wanna definitely develop a product that's uh, with the new features, uh, as little new features as possible, so they don't need to go through that learning curve, they don't need to understand what exactly private key is, they don't need to memorize uh, the this recovery seed phrase on the piece of paper. Uh, working as a wallet company for the past five years, we've learned um, that has proven to be impossible for average Joes. It's literally impossible. And however, um, one thing we've decided to um, um, help the industry to go to the next level is by bringing in the uh, legacy from uh, traditional banking cybersecurity that actually um, your credit cards in your wallet, they are actually your fiat version of crypto wallets. They are wallets. They just, Visa don't call them wallets. But the chip on the credit cards, they store your private keys. And whenever you swipe it, you insert it to an ATM machine, uh, it's making a transaction with your private key. But it's smart that Visa don't call them private keys and they, they don't want users to learn how to deal with that. So it's much more simple. And that is eventually the direction uh, where crypto industry should uh, simplify the process. Anybody else has any thoughts, Rich, please? Sure. Yeah, I'd say that um, the main way to make it, make it easier and better for the average Joe is to provide more education to the service providers, also to, to Jane and, and Joe. And uh, I think uh, it's Paul Samuelson is a deceased American economist who had said, investing should be like watching paint dry or watching grass grow. It's meant to be that you know, you're slowly making money. And if you're looking to you know, gamble, you take that money and, and go to Vegas. I think in the same way, um, if you're looking at ICOs, most of these ideas are more of uh, you know, angel or VC investments. You're not supposed to get that much feedback on the investment um, for years on it. So I think that um, if you're educating Joe, it should be to learn about the investments and whether you believe in the fundamentals of them, not if the, the person across from you made 10x on it last week and you, whether you think it's gonna continue that move or not. So I think you gotta educate people about both the space and about some of the fundamental tenets in investing. Um, I think the most important still is a new asset class. So education is, uh, is, is vital. Uh, I, I strongly emphasize that because up to today, uh, if you talk to the uh, mass of public, or your, uh, I'm not talking the, the grand, grand, grandpa and grandmom, but talk to your colleagues, talk to your friends, if you say you invest in cryptos, especially in bitcoins, some of them are still going to uh, question it's a scam. So I think that's uh, education, understanding, uh, it still is the key of the block the uh, development uh, and the, uh, the, the, the capital flow to this uh, new asset class. Um, after the education comes the first experience and uh, what we have been speaking about is that trying to get people to use it, but once people have actually used it, the next stage would be to try to increase the number of the user cases or the possibilities to actually use it. Um, since the most difficult is to get people interested, once they've passed this hurdle and have tried it, the next big thing is, so wh where, where, where can I use it? And I think what we're working is financial markets is of course one thing, but another one is that I would want to come, like there was one cafe in Singapore which was accepting cryptocurrencies, but it's only one. 
So if I come to you know, an average Starbucks place, I'd, I'd like to be able to pay with my Litecoin. And then I see where, well, what's the user case for it. I see why am I taking the time to actually download a wallet and, and get something into it. So that would be the next step after the education and actually passing people um, to try it. Well, it's important to, to make that easier, right? Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things with cryptocurrency is most people see it as a speculative investment unless, and they're investing in something that they think other people will use or find use in it. But if they don't for themselves find any use in it, then what's the point, right? So I think um, it's important to actually build out these um, payment use cases to actually make it simpler than actually using a credit card, or at least as simple, right? So um, cryptocurrency is a good, good store of value, good sound money, but if you can't really simply use it, then, uh, then it won't succeed. So what's, um, talking about cryptocurrencies, what, what, does, what role does cryptocurrencies and digital assets have as it comes to democratizing this financial ecosystem that we see today? What, what are your views on that? democratizing the financial industry. Can I, can I take a stab at it? Sure. Uh, when we were discussing the uh, kind of the goal where VNX should be in five years, the idea was that um, a shepherd in Nairobi would be able to buy with his phone um, part of the proceeds of Sequoia and at some point with a one click of button being able to send it to a um, uh, guard in Venezuela. That's basically the democratization and its best, where the place of you is irrelevant, but the ease of transaction is there. I think for digital assets and cryptocurrencies, that's, that's probably the, the, the one of the best user cases is completely global <coughs> world, without borders, literally without borders. Yeah, let's say uh, 10 years ago, uh, we're still in the depths of the crisis from 2008, and uh, at that point in time, you had Facebook, which was revolutionizing social media, and uh, Uber was just founded, revolutionizing transport. But when it came to fintech, other than hearing the word, it seemed like the prevailing uh, you know, view towards it was that it's just going to take a lot more time, um, decades instead of years. So you have companies like Western Union, Goldman Sachs, founded in the you know, mid-1800s, and there's a lot of regulations around financial markets, and there's much higher barriers to entry when there's uh, you know, billion uh, or hundred billion dollar companies um, that could keep the barriers high. Uh, but I'd say you know it's in the past five years with the rise of digital assets, it's uh, you know it's given some competition to the incumbents and the old guard. And in many ways, I think uh, a lot of us view uh, buying Bitcoin or buying a digital asset as your vote for saying I don't like being charged forty dollars for a wire and having it take. Um, a day or several days of not knowing whether it even got the right place. I don't like being charged um, to have a minimum amount of money um, in a bank account. So I think um, it's provided a, another vote to say that you don't like the traditional system. Uh, I, sorry. Um, I think there is a given liberty for majority of the capital flow control restriction countries that they can really um, you know, move their money quickly and even, for example, if they are a stable coin, plus STOs, it's a great revolution that then uh, eliminate the boundaries. Uh, for example, if, like, say, Korea investors want to invest American uh, uh, equities, or maybe other countries uh, have a capital uh, outflow restriction, they can invest uh, elsewhere their, their assets. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, is that go first disrupt is the uh, private, uh, their private, private equity investment, busy investment sector, um, and, and so as there uh, definitely like Western unions, uh, this kind of high charge of like this kind of, um, you know, takes out 80% of the, the profit, this kind of, uh, uh, mid, mid, have, as a middleman charge, overcharge kind of industry, um, that's, uh, it's really give uh, humanity, human, human mankind have a liberty uh, and uh, democracy. Thank you. And so now we start to see, Alexander, you're working with banks, as I understand. Poppy, you're having a lot of ex exchanges and working with regulators possibly as well and market making. I'm sure you're dealing with huge monies. Um, where does this distinguished panel, where, where, where do you see um, the institutionalization of the crypto ecosystem and blockchain hating? Uh, where, where are we and where are we moving towards? Any thoughts? 
again, it's a great presentation. Actually, you go all together, all from your presentation. Um, uh, again, as a custodian, it, it, it's very important. Uh, transparency and third-party per, per assurance is everything, uh, especially if, it, if you compare like traditional uh, financial institutions, uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn House, they got third-party assurance, uh, insurance like Dico and also Fidelity. Um, so they have cust custodian service. I think that's a key uh, uh, milestone that for the institution investor can step in and, and invest in cryptos. And insurance is a big part to, for example, Bico, they have uh, uh, insurance policy. Um, I think uh, in terms of with, uh, with uh, mitigation factors, that provide lots of opportunities. Um, uh, so far, I think it's good progress. But I uh, don't know when is the good uh, entry point for them. Um, let's see. I'd say it's, uh, it's going to go where it's most needed first and also where the industry is uh, the most familiar, the most comfortable with the concept. So it makes sense that it's going to the financial um, sector first. I think uh, there's some great ideas around supply chain management. I think it's going to eventually get there, but it might take longer than people expect. Um, and I think you know, generally it's going to go everywhere to the, to the art world and to places where there's more abstract ideas, um, but I think there's less of a need for it to be there. So I think that might be more of a decade out. And I guess, how do we make trading? I mean, a, a lot of you have talked about custodians uh, and needing to make UX, UI easier. Um, just out of curiosity, how do you think um, we can make trading digital assets safe for the community, basically, besides custodian, um, education? Are there any other things that, that we, the community, the government, schools, wh what can we do to actually increase retail participation? Sure, so uh, last year, GSR founded uh, Adam, the Association for Digital Markets, along with nine other crypto financial firms. And the group's goal is to uh, set transparent standards uh, for the industry and make it so that there's, there's protocols that you should go by you know, in order to ensure uh, fair and orderly markets uh, for all participants. So whether it's retail or institutional, people can come in with confidence, and I think you know, that's started off as more of a US-based effort, but it has a, you know, global aspirations. And I think uh, the broader reach of organizations like that you know, can help let people know what are the, the right actions to take, help root out um, bad actors. And the more people are educated, as you mentioned, the less they're gonna go towards exchanges with bad practices and they'll um, patron places that are, are good actors. And overall, the, the space will have some better uh, integrity and give people more confidence to enter. And I guess in the interest of time, if I may ask each of you to leave the audience with, I guess, a piece of advice or something you want them to remember from your talk, what, what would it be before we open it up for q and I think um, in order for crypto to enter the uh, real mass adoption, um, I believe everyone in this room has all seen uh, crypto hit the top at 20,000 US dollars one year ago, and it's been dropping ever since. And if you ask around exchanges or even take a look at the events, it's uh, pretty much the same crowds uh, in the past few years. Um, what's actually missing is the, uh, bringing in the rest of the 95% of population who haven't touched the space. <laughs> and how do we do it? It's by really uh, standardizing the industry and be more compliant to an extent where even authorities, governments can accept. And then that's the moment when mega banks like City, Standard Charter, they will bring in their existing <laughs> customers. That's billion of them we're talking about overnight. So that's the target we should all aim together. Rich? I guess uh, think about your impact on the community, of, uh, what your actions are in, in participating in the digital asset market. Uh, whether you're a service provider or merely a consumer, I think we're all having a, a big impact on what the world's going to be like in the, the next few years. And um, it's good to think twice about aiming for a short-term gain or um, if you do something and hurt someone on the other side, um, you know, it has a more meaningful impact on, uh, on the future. So it's good to give some pause and think about those effects. Uh, I think it's very important my, um, my my last uh, 15 years in, in terms of investment uh, experience, uh, personal investment experience, I think contrarian theory is very, very important. 
So now it's bear market. So uh, maybe it's a good entry point to invest in your, you know, at least a portion of your portfolio uh, as a portfolio invest in cryptos. But uh, maybe average pricing and uh, small percentage is, is a good uh, good start. Um, I, I think the world is changing, uh, but it takes a bit of time. Maybe uh, and also view as a three to five years is a right right time horizon time bound. Not not only focus on short period of time. Uh, but definitely what we're seeing is, uh, is really changing. And in, in reality, uh, every move about the, the change of new technology as a peer-to-peer, -to -peer, uh, Uber, Airbnb, in reality, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer payment, uh, e-payment system. So I think we are, we are participate in a revolution uh, kind of uh, activity. And uh, the, the payment or consensus in terms of variation uh, is there. So um, good, good luck to you all. Uh, my point to build on uh, uh, on the uh, on what Chris was saying is, uh, in summer 2017, I had a quick coffee, coffee with one of the most distinguished investors. Um, he was a f one of the first investors into M Systems, the company that developed a USB standard. He was among the first investors into Skype, um, and over coffee, he said. I think blockchain is the third revolution that I'm participating in after internet and mobile. Um, therefore, with this thought, um, you know, I, I, I leave you all. I think it's only the beginning. Yeah, so I think when the, the cryptocurrency kind of revolution is um, lets you be your own bank, and I think it's important for people to realize what does that mean, right? So means you control your own finances, uh, no one can stop you from using your own money, and also um, with that, it's also responsibility of uh, securing your own coins, All right? So I think people should think about that more and try to realize what exactly that means to them, to themselves, and, and empower how that empowers yourself. Well, with that, uh, we are done with this official part of the panel, and I wonder if any of the audience has any questions before I Charlie to has to scooter off? I have to go. So yeah, Charlie yeah. has to scooter off. <laughs> Maybe we'll just wrap up so then, then, in the case, you know, yeah. let's let's wrap up for now, and then you can grab the speakers over uh, refreshments. <laughs>